while we're doing that, I can introduce our next speakers. I'm so excited to introduce Phil Dexter and Ben Enright, um, and they will be discussing designing the new page editor. Thanks, Dawn. Cheers, Dawn. We'll kick off then. Yeah, hi, yeah. We're, we're Phil and Ben from Torchbox, and we're really uh, privileged to have been working on Wagtail's new page editor. Uh, we started work on it in um, sort of middle of the year last year, so sort of June last year, um, a bit of discovery work and in, yeah, been working on it um, on and off since then, uh, more on recently than off. Um, we presented some, some of these designs back at uh, What's New in Wagtail webinar uh, towards the end of last year and they've, they've moved on since then. Um, we thought that today it would be hopefully interesting for us to sort of talk through where we've made decisions and why we've made decisions. We know that Wagtail is used in lots of different circumstances by lots of different people. I mean, it's quite hard to design something that's gonna work for everyone at, at all times, but hopefully today we can show you some of the, uh, like where we've got to and some of the reasons why we've got there, some of the problems that we, we saw and the ways in which we tried to solve those problems. Um, so fingers crossed this will be as entertaining as <laughs> Matthew's, um, Matthew's talk was just then. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure we're on the same page about where we are aiming to end up. So what you can see hopefully in front of you at the moment um, is Wagtail's new page editor. So this is a Figma mock-up of this rather than the, the final thing, but I'm going to talk you through it um, uh, quite briefly. So uh, at the top uh, left you can see the breadcrumbs are, uh, um, behind a hover here, so I can still see the full breadcrumb, but I hover over it and actually just the normal page title is shown there. Um, we have a secondary um, page actions, what we call this drop down menu here, which is to do all the things that you want to do when you're on the page menu, not all of them, but some of them, um, that you, you previously potentially couldn't do and you, you usually had to kind of drop back up to the, the parent page. That actually did change in 2.16 as a nod towards this, um, but yeah, we're moving some of those actions here. Here, uh, the kind of draft save seconds ago and name this version is, is pointing towards auto save coming in. Uh, which is going to be a, a page locking level initially, but um, still we think this is a, a big thing. It removes the need to have a save draft button, for instance, which you can see has, has disappeared from, from the bottom there. Um, and then we also have kind of, yes, yeah, showing you who else is on the page. Um, I'll come back to these right-hand panels shortly, but first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll cover so, some of the, the editing um, experience. So we still have the tabs, um, as we always have done before. Um, we, uh, I'll just kind of talk you through sort of adding content in so there's no um you know the, the the page title for instance will fill in at the top once you get that and it will show a bit a bit larger there's only one page title at this point um, and then kind of adding stream field is slightly different so this is the experience that you're going to be um, getting with the new page editor rather than the blocks all kind of laying out on the page coming in uh, like this and we'll talk you through a bit more about why shortly um, so here's an example of me adding some rich text in and you can see that draft tiles changed here as well, the rich text editor. Um, so if I wanted, for, for instance, to add or to bold or, or highlight this text, uh, I would select it and get the options at that point. So I could then, for instance, add uh, a link onto the text and apply that, and that would apply in that manner. So that's slightly different to, to how Wagtail works at the moment. Uh, I'll show adding a quote in um, and... Uh, another rich text block. And with this one, <clears throat> one of the things that we're introducing is the ability to be able to split blocks. So for instance, if I have added in these two paragraphs and then I realize, oh no, actually what I want really is an image to go between these two paragraphs. Right now in Wagtail, I'll need to add another image. I'll then need to add below that another rich text block. And then I'll need to take this text and paste that under there. It's a, a tale as old as time. Um, and uh, what we've done now is if you basically press return, so you get to a new line, you're going to be able to split this block. So you, you'll be able to, back to, to add them in with the, the forward slash, but you'll be able to uh, just add in a new block in between, so in the middle of your um, uh, rich text block. So I can stick an image in there, for instance, choose the image, and that, that pops my image in and actually splits that into two rich text blocks with an image in between. So that's an example of some of the changes which uh, may seem trivial, may seem cool and exciting different sorts of people um, that we're making to the kind of editor interface there. Another, um, we think, quite cool point, let me just move zoom out the way, uh, is the what, what certainly I'm calling, I think we're generally calling the mini-map, which is this kind of page index on the right-hand side, but also it will act as a bit of an anchor, so it will take you to um, the place in the page where you click it, and that should, especially for long pages, help us a bit. 
Um, and then this generally the, the, the kind of right hand panel there we're making use of with things like status um, where you'll be able to see various um, different parts of, of metro information and actions and things for your page. Again, we'll go into that a bit more uh, later. Things like history, comments obviously will take up this space as well. Um, and also live preview. So uh, this is going to be basically updating as you're updating the left-hand side. As the page saves, the live preview is going to update as well. So there'll be no more having to like press a, a preview button down here. Um, you will still be able to open in a new tab if you need to and, and hopefully get to different viewports as well. Um, but we're quite excited about that. And then the standard sort of see the, see the front end by clicking live. Um, but we think that this right-hand side is going to be hopefully really useful to be extendable as well. So people will be able to add in their own icons up here and, and use this right-hand side for their own things. Um, and we can think of some others in the future, things around um, you know content support and coaching and stuff um, in live. So that's a relatively brief overview of the, um, the page editor. Um, I think we're going to, do you want to switch across to sharing Figma? Um, yeah. So when we were working on this, we, uh, I saw a quote actually from Steve Jobs, which was this quote, and it really resonated with us, that designing a product is keeping 5,000 things in your brain, fitting them all together in new and different ways to get what you want. And every day you discover something new that's a new problem or a new opportunity to fit these things together a little differently. And that felt very much like this. We felt like we kind of were, were pretty close a lot of times and then there would be one piece of feedback and that would change mm. everything. And you go, oh no, okay, well now we need to change this and that and the other. And then you'd user test it and they'd say, oh, have you thought about this? And you go, no, un unbelievable, we need to change something else. And there's so much that relies on each other and uh, kind of integrates together that it was a really interesting, hard, but interesting problem to try to solve. Um, so yeah, we'll talk you through um, some of that now. So I'm going to have a bit of Ben to talk us through uh, yeah, the first sort of problem we tackled. Cheers, Phil. Yeah, so I think what we wanted to do was take you through some of the thinking we've done, just some of the areas that were challenging, and, and talk you through some of the ambition we had at the start of the process, and, and kind of how it evolved, really, just to give you kind of an insight into how we, um, how we solve some of these problems. So I'm just going to zoom in here. So, so the first area uh, we wanted to really focus on was how to kind of focus on content and reduce visual noise. So, you know, currently Wagtail, you know, it's evolved over time and, and, and as the UI has, has evolved, there's quite a lot of elements that kind of, kind of take your attention away from the content. And um, an early ambition for us, even like uh, years, years ago, was to was for, for Wagtail to kind of be this natural writing experience, you know, things like Dropbox paper or the new, um, or things like Notion or Gutenberg's another example where, you know, you take away um, quite a lot and it's just really kind of breathable, kind of natural writing experience. So this is like a really early first iteration of this process where we were like, let's take it all away and start again and see what we can do because we wanted people to, to feel like this is natural, I can see my content, I can get on with writing my content. Um, so this was like a first incarnation. Um, as we went through this process, we explored a few different things. So we were like, okay, let's take the labels away from fields. You know, do, do people really need those? Are they just getting in the way? Um, if you're writing a blog post, you know, and you're creating stream field blocks, those labels maybe you know you learn that what those blocks are. You're, you, you don't need to be told that. So that kind of felt quite good at, at this stage. You know, we took away the labels. We were like, maybe we'll have an icon there. But otherwise, you kind of feel like, here's the content. It's kind of almost WYSIWYG. Um, that felt pretty good for a while. Um, but what about the sort of structured templates? I mean, you know, this is, Wagtail is obviously not just used for blog writing and things like that. There's some quite highly structured template. This isn't even a very kind of complex example. But, you know, quite quickly you realize that someone coming to um, a particular page in Wagtail that they need to edit to fill in content you know, you, you kind of need labels for these things, right? So, and, um, and you know, if you don't have um, UI Chrome around a field, for example, you know, there are, you start to run into accessibility problems quite quickly. And so what you have is this kind of hybrid where you're trying to keep this thing natural, but you, know, you have to cater to this kind of structured, structured um, data. So it evolved. And then, so we obviously brought back, you know, elements, but we wanted to keep true to what we were trying to achieve, which was like keep the labels small. So we kind of tried to shift the focus from large labels to, you know, labels that give you what you need, but you can still focus in on content. 
And then we started thinking, okay, so we're, we're doing all right with that. We kind of met kind of in the middle. How about, how's that going to work with things like stream fields? So then we've got this kind of combination of structured fields, but also stream field where people are building up stuff. So we started to explore how can we kind of meet again, like in the middle where we, because, you know, we obviously stream fields got, each block's got elements that, you know, it's got functions, it's got actions that associate with those blocks. You need to move them around. But what do we need to show, to show people uh, before they interact with that particular block? Um, currently, and I'll talk about this kind of idea of lost in stream field in a minute, um, but currently the, you know, the, the, the stream field UI Chrome gets quite busy, especially when you start getting nested. So we've explored these kind of ideas for, you know, only show the stuff you need when you're focused on it. So it just kind of hones you in on that thing. So, you know, we, we introduced um, these lines that kind of help you to focus on the, on the block that you're, that you're interacting with. So this started feeling quite nice. And so you start to see this like, sense of indentation, but it's quite, quite light and you can kind of just scroll to the, to the content that you're looking for. So that evolved. Um, and then things like accessibility came to mind, you know, so, you know, there's, there's, there's issues around um, help text, for example, we had some feedback from the community when we shared these, shared these links uh, to, on GitHub that, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of research that says that inline help text is, is more effective. And um, there's a lot of, lot of people who kind of guided us in, 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 the, in the sense that help text is really important to a lot of people in, these, in this world. So we brought that in line rather than over on the right hand side to kind of give it more of, a, more of its place, which, you know, we had to give up some vertical space for that, which an ambition for us was to try and save vertical space, but we felt like it was the right balance from an accessibility perspective. Um, and then so, and that's where we are now. So, so this is sort of where the, the demo that Phil just shared. And, you know, we've kind of got to a point now where we've, 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 we've kind of got to the finer details and we've introduced a slightly larger size label for accessibility reasons. Um, so, you know, it, ideally we would have gone smaller, but we need to make sure this is accessible. So we've kind of, this is where we've landed and this is what Phil just demoed. And we're feeling pretty good about um, the kind of the balance with the, that we've struck. We've introduced things like these icons to kind of imply there's, you know, there's functions there without actually showing them to everybody. So, you know, you know that there's a, a menu there. It's not completely hidden. So yeah, so then um, carrying on then. So as part of stream field, obviously there's the menu um, and that's kind of what we have at the moment. Uh, so how is that gonna work in this new world? Obviously at the moment it kind of, it's in line, it's pushing stuff down. Um, we explored this, can we group things? But then we kind of started thinking about the splitting functionality and about how actually, um, you know, if you're going to be using, uh, say for example, key keyboard shortcuts to split using the kind of backslash idea, then actually these kind of ideas where the kind of the menu appears on top feels more natural because it's something that you can just press escape and it goes away. It's not affecting the, the, the page um, flow or anything like that. And, you know, you can then tab through or, or quickly search for your, for your components or your, your stream field blocks. So that's kind of how we've ended up with this kind of fly up menu that feels really consistent um, across all the bits. And then, so before I hand over back over to Phil, um, I just wanted to talk a bit more about this idea of, of lost in stream field that we talk about a lot. So yeah, this idea that when you go quite deep, deeply nested, you start to get a bit confused, right? You kind of lose your way. You know, there's kind of this idea that these pluses, you know, there's no indentation on the pluses. That's, that's, that can get a bit confusing. You kind of lose where you are. You know, the labels are on the right-hand side at the moment. Um, you know, the kind of less useful labels are the ones you, you scan to. How can we kind of solve that problem? A couple of things we tried, and one of them was kind of we <coughs> maintain indentation. We couldn't really get away from that. Uh, but we're not indenting on the right now, just indenting on the left. And we're using our lines that we introduced to kind of anchor you to the one you're focused on. And also deliberately using the plus uh, symbol on the left hand side so you can so you can honor that idea of indentation and then so what happens when you scroll down quite deep well this, this is an idea we've had around this idea of kind of this stream field breadcrumb so as you scroll you've got this kind of anchoring uh, of the of where you are and if you want to kind of get back to the top of a certain kind of level you can click this and it might scroll you back up to the top so yeah um, so that was one way of solving the lost in stream field, but there's a, a few things that Phil can talk about now around kind of long pages as well that we wanted to, that we've explored. Yeah, exactly. The, the lost in stream field has two, two relevant points, and one is the nested, where you have 
nested, 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 nested stream fields. And the other is just very long pages. You might not have nested stream fields so much, but you just have tons and tons of content on long pages. When you have that, it's, it can be quite hard to, to get through. Um, and I know recently we've introduced uh, collapsible blocks and things like that, which is definitely helping. But we were looking at things like, um, you know, this. I think VS Code has this kind of idea of a, a smaller version of what you're looking at on the top right hand side and we, we quite like that as a concept I think I pushed for that before everyone sort of told me that actually it's, it's better for this than it is for um, for what we're trying to solve um, at one stage we looked at the live preview so the idea of the live preview and being able to drag like a box up and down on that and it would drag and it would kind of move your left hand side up and down as well your content and your live preview being completely in sync but actually when you think about it that's really tricky to do yeah um, because your uh, content, you know, might be really long here. Um, you, you don't necessarily know that it's in the same order. Um, there's, you know, it's it's pretty hard for us to come up with a way, a pattern of making that work consistently. Um, so yeah, we looked at a few different kind of document outlines and things um, that we really liked, especially uh, yeah, this this sort of situation. You can see we're getting closer and closer to our final destination. Mm -hmm. This is sort of what yeah where we kind of um, started off going was was this kind of pattern of, of this index, this sort of mini map, this version where we're using color to donate different um, stream field versus kind of structured data. Um, this is another version where here we, we're sort of, even in the content, we're using the, the name of the field for the structured data, which works you know, relatively well. But then in, in your, your stream field, it's, it's kind of a bit wasted. It's, you're not quite sure where yeah. you are with it. And so in the end, we end up going with a bit of a, a yeah, in between the two, where we, we're using the content, um, which I think is what people will want to look for within within stream field, whereas, whereas with the structured data, it's more the kind of name of the field that you might care about rather than whether the thing is sort of you know, ticked or not or, um, or whatever. So that's another way we've been trying to solve the kind of uh, lost in stream field um, situation. Um, and then <clears throat> another thing that we've been, been looking at is this idea of uh, yeah, what you see is what you get in terms of uh, editing. And as, as Ben said, we tried to go that way early on with our designs to try and make the admin experience look as much as possible as, as perhaps the front end would and, and make it customizable in that way. We looked at a few kind of things that we liked in terms of, or well, maybe we didn't like, but we looked at a few inspirations uh, around this in terms of uh, you know, having, having um, WYSIWYGs, but actually as Ben said, the, the structure, um, the structured data means we need those labels. We're not going to be able to go to a WYSIWYG kind of click in and, and edit your design sort of scenario. So what's really the problem we're trying to solve there? Well, it's allowing your editor, your content editor to be able to uh, visualize what this will look like on the front end without having to click preview every two minutes. Um, you know, and, and, and I think the live preview that we've ended up with is something that allows that to happen. On the left-hand side, you've got your accessible structured data that works for hopefully lots of different um, scenarios and different use cases for Wagtail. And on the right-hand side, you're able to see what that will look like. So your content editor can, can constantly kind of have a view of that. So hopefully that's a, a nice marriage of the, of the two. Um, and yeah, we're, we're quite pleased with sort of how that's looked. We're doing on time, we're doing okay on time. Mm. Right. Hello. Strap in, because the next bit's good. So, this is uh, uh, Wagtail's page editor, as it looks like now, uh, which will be hugely familiar to everyone, I'm sure. And um, I've got a few things open here. So I've got the, the actions open at the bottom. Um, I'm on the settings tab. We've got a lot of information in the header. And it's effectively what's happened here is with kind of products that, that live and grow organically as, as Wagtail has, often what you'd end up doing is kind of bolting on new things and finding places to put new things. So like the comments uh, on the right hand side here feels a little bit lost, a little bit lonely over there. And, and the um, metadata, we did a bit of a rewrite of this in, in 2.10, but not really enough. For a long time, we felt like the header is taking up too much vertical space. Um, the duplicate kind of title in the top and on the content having the title there has always felt a bit wasted. This schedule publishing, I'm not gonna go on about because everyone knows it's a little bit confusing, um, but having it here and having privacy here, whereas you've got lock in here has always felt interesting because they both sort of 
you know, take action straight away. So I think there have been yeah. certain things and, and certain bits of meta information that I felt like, well, why is that there and not somewhere else? Why is this the meta that I yeah. can see? And so what we tried to do was take a, you know, is this was a great opportunity for us to take a step back, really, and one of the driving foot factors behind this to go, well, what should the actions be? You know, what should the buttons be? What's the information people want to see when they're editing versus just to have available to them? And so this is kind of the new, the new header. So we've still got the breadcrumbs, as we know, they're hugely important for people to be able to kind of navigate to and know where they are in the, um, in the, the system. We've introduced, as we said, the secondary page menu, which I think is really important and houses some of those actions that previously were down in the, in the published menu, which was just getting a bit too big, really, that published menu to kind of find the key action you wanted. Obviously, we need to bring auto saving to give people confidence that the thing is actually saving, not just, you know, probably it's working, but actually, yes, it is, and, and the information about who else is editing. Um, and yeah, the tabs we've actually left down here, we did for a while try and put the tabs up into this header, but it felt like it wouldn't necessarily be a sensible move, and actually, the vertical space we're gaining, you know, these tabs will scroll underneath this header anyway, so it's not a huge deal for us to put them there. But alongside that, we brought in this status panel, and we spent quite a long time trying to get the words right and, and the visuals right on this to give you the information that you want really importantly and quickly. So mm -hmm. the fact that the status is, is a draft or live, whatever it is, the, the ability to get to the history of this page, because these things are linked, right? The history of the page and what the status the page is in and when that page was changed, right? Um, we've brought the, the kind of locales um, and, and localized stuff in here because now, now Wagtail is simple localized in its uh, in core. Um, so your ability to to know which locale you're in and switch if you're using if you're using locales, locking and page locking feels more natural here I think than down in the publish. You know what we've tried to do is keep that bottom left button to be much more around publishing and schedule yeah. publishing and and kind of the page page status changes like that rather than locking, which feels more of a settings. And you can actually see we've we're going to be uh, not in the next release but the final one getting rid of the settings panel altogether because we've pulled that that stuff out. We will have been. Uh, including the page privacy, which has come in here. Um, so it's a mixture, really, of statuses, help text, and just kind of useful information, as well as sort of meta information. Um, hopefully things like first publish will be useful for people more more generally. Um, and yeah, you can just see, I'll just you know, briefly show a few of the previous versions of this, just to show, hopefully, you think this is okay, you know, if not pretty decent, we like it. But it took us a long time to get here. There were a lot of versions of this that were worse, where we were you know, confusing what people find useful and which information belongs together and how should yeah. these actions be and should we introduce a whole nother page menu up here and what should it do? So, you know, there, there's a lot of work and effort has gone into trying to make things simple, which hopefully they feel now. Yeah. So um, we're coming up to time now. Um, I would mention that there is a GitHub discussion that looks a bit like this that our man Thibaut started. Um, where we are regularly, I think every couple of weeks, we're giving updates on our progress on the page editor. And we started building this um, in late January this year, and we are aiming to be releasing um, a lot across the next couple of releases. You'll see the page editor starting to morph and change, hopefully in, in nice ways. Um, but we're really you know, welcoming feedback and welcoming comments. Um, we do respond to all of them uh, as much as we can. Uh, and they have definitely influenced us as well. You'll be able to see in, in the um, discussion, if you, if you care to, where we've taken on board things and where we've kind of listened to feedback from the community. So, yeah, we also really appreciate everyone who's been involved with user testing this um, as well. There's been, I can't remember how many across a long period of time, probably six months, we've done various different user tests, um, and they've all been really useful. User testing is always great, um, so usability testing, that is. So, yeah, we've, we've really enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, do kind of get in contact if um, you know if, if you uh, have been inspired by this and, and want to give us any feedback or or generally have uh, any feedback for us at all. Uh, we're also looking for uh, for sponsorship still um, to to kind of finish off the final bit. So get in contact if you feel like your organisation's in a great place to do that too. Um, otherwise, we're good. I should note that we do recognise we are wearing matching hoodies. This wasn't a uh, planned scenario. Um, we're actually wearing fully matching outfits as well. We've got full <laughs> jeans and hoodie situation going on. So <laughs> go for a burger after this, everyone's going to think we're really cool. <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, we're coming up on time. We have a few minutes uh, for questions before the next talk. Um, I'm not seeing any in chat in the moment, um, but let's see if there's any. Here we go. One question is, uh, you know, when you're looking at inspiration from things like YouTube, or, uh, you know, are, are we So when you are uh, looking at other uh, features like Gutenberg, are you looking to match any feature parity or are you looking to uh, get the current features up to where you're looking to get them? Okay, are you looking to add any new features while you're doing this big uh, new, new push? Um, well, I suppose, um, I think I understand the question, I suppose, when we're looking at other other kind of features and to, other tools and other things out there for inspiration, it mainly is for inspiration. It's to try and understand where other people doing things really well. We're not kind of saying, hey, we should be as good as this other tool. It's more sort of, that's interesting. I wonder why they're doing that um, and what are the benefits of approaching it in that kind of manner. Um, so I think that's probably um, what I'd say about when we're looking at other tools. In terms of um, new features, um, I suppose, I'm not sure uh, if I've really got the grasp of the question, but I suppose we're, we're, we are bringing quite a few new features with the page editor um, in terms of things like live preview and auto save, the, the mini map on the right hand side, the block splitter. Uh, so yeah, sorry if I haven't understood the question. But maybe another day. That was a perfect answer. That's oh, what okay. we got from the audience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I think there are some questions in the chat. Holy All right. Hi guys, great job. While developing a new feature, usually we need to have a kind of a settings, quote unquote, section as per block level. What I mean is that it would be very nice to have a cog icon next to the duplicate icon that once clicked, it opens a section where we've added block setting fields to be used as setting not settings, not content. In parentheses, i.e. let Let's say you have a carousel block and on those block setting fields, you can define an autoplay or a slide per, view, or slide per view and so. Ah, Are you planning to have that kind of feature on the new design? Not right now we're not, but I think what would be cool, Marcos, is if you could drop that onto the um, GitHub discussion so that we can follow up with uh, people like Gasman and Tebow who are working on this project with us and we can have a chat about that. That's quite interesting. Uh, I don't think I've seen an example like that before. Mm, I think so. Um, but I don't think there's a reason we shouldn't be able to either allow that to be extendable, he says, or, <laughs> or, uh, or think about that. Yeah, this work well worth us thinking about. So thanks, Marcus. But yeah, if you could drop that onto the, the GitHub discussion, that would be ideal. Um, I can see there's a question or two questions about the collapse all functionality. Yes, that is oh, yeah. a thing that we will have, or that we're intending to have. Um, we haven't come up with a design that we like enough to be able to include it yet, but it's basically on our on our backlog of of things still to um, still to finish off with this, and that's one of the key ones. So yeah, thank awesome. you. Awesome. I'm I'm going to repeat the question for the recording as well. Those who aren't in the Zoom. Um, is there going to be a collapse all functionality? This is uh, this is sort of related to the loss in stream field discussion because we definitely have extremely long and nested pages. And yeah, navigation is super difficult and confusing. Love this sort of table of contents mini map idea um, on the side, but something uh, simple like collapse all blocks would be useful too. Um, and you, you definitely spoke to that. Cool. Um, and one more, uh, great work. Uh, can the editor be used on production site now? Uh, no, uh, because we are still building it at this point in time. So people are writing the code as we speak and um, uh, we're expecting it to be included. We're expecting, so in the next version of Wagtail, we are um, hoping to include some changes. Um, we certainly will be including some changes in the um, August release of Wagtail. So we do have some of the changes already merged into core, including like the left slim sidebar. Um, but yeah, it's one of those where Wagtail will be released, um, you know, at the point we expect it to be in early May, 
um, and it's really hard for us to commit features to releases, so we prefer not to not to guarantee things like that. But I would say that that that's that's our aim, and and um, yeah, we'll try and keep keep everyone updated, basically. Awesome. Um, all right, we're at time. Um, thank you so much, y'all. That was fantastic. Every time you do the presentation, I'm really excited to see it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.